So let's talk about trees. But not the kind with flowers or fruit or leaves. No, I mean the trees that underlie our sentences, the ones that build up the structure that our words slot into and let us build bigger meanings. Every time you build a sentence, every time someone talks to you, you're growing one of these trees. All I've just been saying has planted a little grove of language in your mind. So let's do some climbing. I'm Moti Lieberman, and this is The Ling Space. Welcome to The Ling Space. There's a whole branch of linguistics that's devoted to looking at the structure of sentences, known as syntax. But why do we even bother? Can't we just stack our words one on top of another like pancakes to make some delicious meanings? Well, there has to be some structure, or else we'd be able to work back from a smashed up wreck of a sentence like, a threatening hand is to angel missing lawyer that is, and have it get the same meaning as the original. The lawyer who is missing a hand is threatening angel. Clearly, one of those is a good sentence of English, and the other one is just gibberish that happens to be made up of English words. So structure must matter. But what kind of structure do we need? Well, whatever hypothesis we come up with, it's got to be really flexible. That's because it has to capture all the variation in how all the different languages in the world put together all their different sentences. We don't want to say Icelandic speakers have one basic way of making sentences, but Telugu speakers have a second one, and Cree speakers a third. Building sentences with their own internal structures is something common to every language of the world. And so an Icelandic baby dropped off in southeastern India will learn Telugu syntax just fine. That's because the basic framework of syntax is universal. In fact, it's part of universal grammar, the linguistic knowledge all people share. But with all the surface differences, finding something that can branch its way through every human language isn't obvious. Not only does it have to be flexible, it also has to be abstract. So there are a lot of hypotheses out there, but one of the most commonly talked about ones is called X-bar theory, first proposed in the early 70s. The X in X-bar doesn't stand for anything. It's a variable, like in algebra. We can use that variable to make a basic structure, a template, like this. X can stand for any noun, or verb, or adjective, or any category you want to build a phrase around. You end up with chunks of syntax that can be stacked and connected together. And we do it in a way that's flexible enough to communicate anything that you want in any language that you want. This gets a lot clearer when you start looking at some examples. Let's start with something really simple. A name, like Cordelia. Okay, so in your mental lexicon where you store all your words, each term belongs to a syntactic category, which is like a part of speech, so a noun, an adverb, etc. Cordelia is a noun, so when we want to put Cordelia in our X-bar tree, we replace the X's with N's for nouns. In this phrase, Cordelia is the head, which is the part of the phrase with the most content and meaning. Because Cordelia is the head of the phrase, and because it's a noun, the whole thing will become a noun phrase, or NP. Great! Done. Except not really. This might work if we'd never said anything more than bare nouns and verbs and things, but natural language is a lot more involved than that. So sometimes all you want to say is Cordelia, but sometimes you might want to say nice things about Cordelia. Maybe you want to say the amazing Cordelia. Where do those other words fit in? Well, that's where the bar part of X-bar theory comes to the rescue. So between the head and phrase level, we introduce one more layer of complexity. That's the bar level, which is written with an apostrophe next to the letter that represents the head. The bar level is an intermediate, repeatable stage in the template that allows us all the flexibility we need to build bigger phrases and sentences. Let's see how this works. Since they're all still associated with the noun, they're all to do with Cordelia, you need to have extra room for them in your noun phrase. So they need to get nestled into the NP, and that's where the N bar comes in. Now your sentence is shaping up. But wait, why bother having these intermediate stages at all? Even if we know all these words come together to make up a noun phrase, why put in all these extra levels of structure? Why not just put in an NP at the top, and then different labels for all the words below? So an N for the noun, an A for the adjective, etc. That'd be easier, right? Well, here's the thing. The reason we needed syntax in the first place was to give structure to how come sentences mean what they do, and have the word order that they do. All the information about what a sentence means, that is the syntax. 
And it has to be visible in our diagrams, or else why bother drawing trees in the first place, right? So we end up needing to branch things off two by two with bar levels. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what parts go with other parts. We can even put as many bar levels into the structure as we want, so it'll work with any kind of sentence. For example, if we said the quirky, supremely intelligent Fred, and there was no internal structure, so everything was just flat, we wouldn't know that supremely was supposed to go with intelligent and not with quirky. We wouldn't be able to come up with any rules to stop these things. All the rules, everything that's okay and not okay, has to be seen in the structure. The bar levels give us a hierarchy that allows us to make sense of things like this. Now we know supremely goes with intelligent, and that you can't just pull words out willy-nilly to make nonsense sentences. What X-bar theory shows us is the way that we can build structure in order to capture all the facts of language, along with the flexibility to add whatever we like. They let us add potentially infinite parts before the head, like the bespectacled bookish Brit Wesley, or after the head, as in the vampire with a soul and a big black coat. And this sort of syntax also lets us capture facts about how we form larger sentences, ask questions, find ambiguity, and all sorts of other things, which we'll talk about in the future. Linguists today have a lot of other hypotheses about syntax too, but X-bar is a great place to start because it shows all of the hallmarks of why syntax is real and useful. It can be applied to any type of word, in any type of sentence, in any type of language. It's just a template, a head with a phrase and as many intermediate stages as you'd like. But by using that one little template and putting it in every time you make a phrase, you can shape a whole world of language. Shaping those little trees can tell you what language is, and that's worth the climb. So we've reached the end of the ling space for this week. But if you were making your own happy little trees, you learned that sentences must have an internal structure to them if we're going to capture the facts we know about them, that the basic template of that structure needs to be flexible and universal, that the template in X-bar theory consists of a head, a phrase, and as many bar levels as you need to fit all the words you have, and that structure should branch off two by two to fit the facts about hierarchy that we feel are true. The Link Space is written and produced by me, Moti Lieberman. It's directed by Adelaide's Prévost. Our production assistant is Georges Coulomb. Our music and sound design is by Shane Turner. And our graphics team is Atelier Muse. We're down in the comments below. Or you can take the discussion back over to our website, where we have more information on this topic. Check us out on Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you want to keep expanding your own personal Link Space, please subscribe. And we'll see you next Wednesday. C'est la vous.